Good morning. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come before you and uh, kind of share a little bit of my vision, why we're running for this, this office and how we can work together. So I'll start off a little bit about telling you who I am. You got the short little bio there, but you have to see that I, um, my parents came here in 72 in the town of Quincy, moved to Wenatchee for work, and then Grand Coulee Dam. Now Grand Coulee Dam is a very big town. Um, we're a whole lot going on, actually not, but my graduating class was 95 students, so you kind of knew everybody. What do you learn in a small town, though? You learn values like keeping your word, about loving your neighbor, about finishing what you started. It's where I got my Eagle Scout. Apparently not so many people have earned those, but I did. It's where you learn love of country and about being trustworthy and honest. Those are values that I've carried with me the rest of my life, and those are values that would be good as lieutenant governor. And when I went to UW, and of course, healthcare for last uh, for 13 years, which I met my lovely wife there. She's been a nurse for 26. She now works for the state for L and I as a nurse consultant. When I'm looking at this office as lieutenant governor, it talks about you know besides filling in for the governor, besides um, presiding over the Senate, there's an opportunity for the for the lieutenant governor to be the ambassador for the state and to the state to actually be the voice. Every senator, every uh, legislator actually serves our community. But I have several friends that are serving now. And during a session, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but outside of the floor, they have four appointments every 15 minutes. How are you supposed to hear or understand people in, 15, in about four minutes apiece, right? I have more time than that up here just to talk to you, right? It's, it's hard. So talking about Lieutenant Governor. Besides that, the Lieutenant Governor uh, chairs the Economic Development um, Board and trade. So anything to do with the, the state or uh, business, that's a powerful position. Beyond that, chairing the Rules Committee, every piece of uh, legislation comes through rules. Another one where you want to have a bigger picture. Um, when I look at this thing, though, talk about it, is my very first house was right here in Renton. When I worked in healthcare and real estate, I've lived just about every t town and city around here. I live in Gig Harbor now. Part of that perspective is when I bring to the office is the perspective of I know what it's like to be a farmer and a rancher in Eastern Washington. I know what it's like to be a realtor and a healthcare worker. I know what it's like to be in a community and raise your kids. It's a little different. I also bring the passion, knowing that passion is for people in this state. And that's our biggest resource in cities, counties, and state is our people. And I bring the right principles, understanding that if we don't start first with what our values are, our basic constitution, the values that was, they were founded upon and the, the people are important, that our government was founded on the people, by the people, for the people, and with the people. Right now we have stories in our state government where our state agencies are actually hiring lobbyists to, to lobby the legislators to make sure the agency grows. That's backwards. And so what I wanted to bring is, first of all, is we have to change the culture of government. In this office, you have a huge opportunity to engage with both sides, to encourage a, an, an environment where it actually puts people first. It's pretty good loud. <laughs> anyway, I call it the golden rule. Everybody knows what the golden rule is, treating your neighbor as you want to be treated. The bottom line is if you start there, if people have three basic needs, to be heard, respected, and valued. I always talk about on the campaign trail, when's the last time you felt heard, respected, and valued by your government? And most of the time they laugh, they go, never, right? Well, it's everyone in government typically goes there for the right reasons, but it's the system that gets changed. We have to turn that around where we say, you know what? We're doing this for the people we serve. We understand that. So let's change that in the Senate where we're going to listen to both sides. We're going to bring them together in a place of saying, what's the best solution for the state, for everybody in the state, not the partisan divide? So one of those ideas that I bring to the table, and I've already talked to, Every state agency has a budget. We know this. At the end of the year, if they don't spend their budget, they lose it, right? What does this do? From a very natural standpoint, it incentivizes uh, these state agencies to spend money. So at the end of the, the fiscal cycle, you have, you're buying reams of paper, you're buying new computers, you're going buying whatever, because you're penalized if you don't spend it. So what I want to do, one of those things is legislation with Lieutenant Governor. I got about 18 senators on board. I got Mark Melosha, running for state auditor on board, and Bill Bryant, if he wins the governor. I'll work with Jay Inslee as well. But we fixed the budget. You can't lose it. No matter what, your budget is fixed for the next two years. However, for every dollar you save through cost savings or innovation or not spending that money, verified and still delivering the same amount of services, verified by the auditor the next year, 10% will go back to the employees as a bonus. 20% can be reallocated for unpaid pensions. 
and the rest can be reallocated for education spending, which is a win-win for both sides. It's one of those things we can get done in the first session that makes sense because we're changing the incentive to actually do the right thing for the right reasons. One of the questions here is how you engage local communities. I talk about on the campaign about a 3M thing. It's one of the things I'm very passionate about. The solutions for Renton, we're right here in Renton, or solutions for Yakima are typically in Yakima or in Renton. Now, oftentimes, the one size fits all never works. We can talk about program and program, we can, transportation and so forth, but the real solutions are best fit at the local level. So as Lieutenant Governor outside of session, I'll engage with you and your local communities to gather together local business leaders, local government leaders, local nonprofits, everybody that's involved in that community. And let's, let's get together and identify three or five things that aren't being addressed by Olympia that we can address here. Is there a local solution for it? Is there a business solution for even government? Is there an educational solution? Is there something that nonprofits or faith-based groups can actually do in a more efficient way that isn't um, put upon government to do? Is there a, then is, if there's a regulation or a rule that's in the way that I can take that back to the Senate and say, hey, Senate, as your lieutenant, lieutenant governor, this is what Renton wants to solve their own problems. Can we help them do it? Whether it be removing something or adding something, this is what the government's supposed to do. It's supposed to help you help your neighbors. And so I don't have too much more time, do I? Ah, I got plenty of time, good, all right. So we talk about how do you do that. I, as a realtor and as a broker, at one point in time I was managing nine different offices, three different ownership groups, 150 different em employees, agents. All three had different um, modes of operation. All three didn't like each other. Sounds like the Senate, right? Okay, and I, I made a promise to them. We're gonna start on time, we're gonna finish on time. I won't waste your time and everyone will have a voice. What we won't do though is disrespect each other, what we won't do is argue, and what we won't do is talk over each other. Can we agree to that? And they agreed to it. Within six months, we were one office, one team, and setting sales records because the, I kept my word and they kept theirs as well. Even with the Senate, if they if people understand they will have a chance to speak, and they will not be spoken over, and it will be, the IDs will be valued, and we'll have a win-win uh, vision for the whole state, it's gonna work, so that's how we do it. Okay. Okay, and the basis of this too is part of the 3M and part of the other solutions uh, is I see a lot more cross uh, collateralization. I, I see the Lieutenant Governor working more with the Governor, the Auditor, with the, the Commissioner of Public Lands, with the, the Treasurer as well, as, as the finance committee for the state, the governor, lieutenant governor, and the treasurer sit on that, there's gotta be a lot more communication on how we manage those dollars and those investments. Same thing with public lands. When we understand that our public trust for trees and, and the DNR land, that that goes to education funding, we know that for every dollar we invest at the state level for state-run lands, we get $18 back in return. However, for every dollar we invest in federally managed lands, we lose 18 cents. So there's a move now to work with the uh, Commissioner of Public Lands and with, a, with our congressional uh, delegation to, re to restore some of those federal lands to the state so we have a better managed forest land and, and more funding for education. Those are types of ideas I love to work with crossways. And also like to increase that collaboration at every level, working with counties and local governments there and in cities. And then the idea there, someone asked the, the governor earlier about how, how do you see a task force? I see engaging subject matter experts on everything. Go into the business communities and say, how can we help you hire more people? How can we, engaging the art community, the education community, say, what is it that's getting in the way from you educating children? And I see it longer about, let's, let's talk about from the Senate standpoint, from the Lieutenant Governor, and talk about from a business standpoint, all this, what are our strategic plans going forward? You know, we talk about McCleary, which is a hot topic, but you think about it, that's short-sighted, right? So it's one problem, then there's the next problem. What's our 20 year plan for what we want our kids to do? What are our measurables and how do we get there? We should be talking about those type of things. So if we want our kids to be competitive in the world market, we want them to be job ready, we need to have measurables that work and measurables that we start looking at now and how do we get there? It's more than just funding, it's, it's how do we want to prepare the future? I had this argument the other day about this. It's like in Gig Harbor, we just we turned down another levy. Why? Right? They keep on wanting to spend more money on doing the same thing over the next 30 years. Well, if, if businesses have transitioned from brick and mortar to online and gotten more technology, why aren't we engaging more of that? My son's going to Digipen over in Redmond, you guys know it. 
It's a trade school that they've been the entire time doing what they're gonna do when they get out. So they have a 95% placement for jobs with Google and Microsoft and Nintendo because they're doing it. You know, it's, we've gotta be creative in that way, give more choices to local communities to educate their kids and move forward and be competitive in the world market. So anyway, I'm Marty McClendon. I'll take some questions here um, now. But I just wanna know it would be such an honor to serve you as your Lieutenant Governor. My passion really is to engage people and love people in that way. Knowing that if we start by changing the culture and saying every person, every man, woman, and child in our communities, in our state, has a God-given talent and ability that we need to encourage them to step forward and say, if you do, if you bring what you have, your community's better, your county's better, your city's better, and your state is better. Let's get engaged. Thank you. All right, I have a few questions from the audience here. Uh, the first one from Jay Arnold, who is the Deputy Mayor of Kirkland. Awesome. As the presiding officer of the State Senate, how can the Lieutenant Governor help break the gridlock within the Senate? We were just talking about that. The part of it, you start with that same ma mantra, that we're gonna make sure that everybody's heard and it has a statewide view, that we're gonna work until we find the right solution for the state, not just a solution. Uh, the gridlock right now is partisan to partisan. You know, part of coming in outside of the Senate, I don't have the built-in baggage from being on either side of fighting those battles. So I have a fresh set of eyes and ears to say, let's hear it. How does that work? Give me the details. Let's work on both sides and let's come to a solution. We owe this to the people we serve. We've had seven special sessions in a row. For what reason? Because we haven't dealt with the problems in a timely order. So part of that is setting the tempo and saying, we're gonna deal with the budget first, those are the most important, right out of the way. So let's deal with that discussion there, and then let's deal with all these appropriations, to all these things down the line, and then let's take a real hard look at what is not working and what is working. Let's think a plan that we're gonna work together now and throughout the, the year, because one of those things too, when we look at this state and our business market and our business environment, you know, all too often it's no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that. So I think that's another way of bringing the sides together. We know when we start saying yes, when, when in a way that we can find a way to say yes to our business community, we'll have more jobs, more, uh, more tax money coming in, more relationship, and more wins for everybody. Hope that helps. All right. And besides, I used to live in Kirkland, too. <laughs> Next, these are anonymous questions. Do you have ideas or opinions about what you, as Lieutenant Governor, could help us and the state do to address the epidemic of homelessness and mental health challenges facing our communities? This is a big one. Um, obviously, the, the intro for me was I do a radio show. For two years, we've been talking about this and seeing it grow and grow and grow. Part of this comes down to leadership. We, we've got to actually have a plan to deal with homelessness. Um, we always get what we incentivize. And the, one of the reasons that we have such an increase in homelessness is we do things that incentivize people to move here. We've got states around the nation giving homeless people a one-way ticket to Seattle because we're so friendly to our homeless. You know, okay, that's gotta change. Not that we have to be friendly, but what are we doing that's drawing more here and inverting the system? Um, the governor mentioned too that we have to also differentiate. That many of these issues are, and some of them are drug-related, related on what the percentage is. So those that are, are addicted to drugs, we need to have a program where we get them off the streets, get them treatment, but also give them options to say, you know, you have to stay off and, and, you know, and there's an opportunity to get employed. There are a huge veterans issue now with PTSD and homelessness. homelessness. This is one of my um, platforms I really am passionate about. In, in Tacoma alone, there are like 34 different groups, literally 34 different groups that care for veterans, but there's no consolidated care. So it's one of those things that's partnering with um, public, private, nonprofit, and saying, what's being done now? How can we orchestrate from my office saying what is being done so we can address specifically homeless veterans? And then the other one, of course, is those that just are, you know, the economy. We've got to get the economy going. So what is a temporary um, way to get them housed and then get them back on their feet? You know, job skills training centers or whatever, but we've got to address it in a way, in a very aggressive way, because what happens when we don't is they move from Seattle to Renton, and then from Renton to Puyallup, from Puyallup to Graham, as basically law enforcement and property crime goes up. And so we're seeing an epidemic around the state, because we're not dealing with the root causes, as Governor Inslee said. The root cause, though, really is, is change of policies, so we're not rewarding more of this. 
we're finding a solution to get them out of the system. And there will always be a small portion that will just, it's, it's a lifestyle more than anything. And I've got, some, I've got a, a client of mine who's a longtime friend, uh, inner city S Seattle, uh, was homeless for 12 years. Uh, he now owns four or five different duplexes. He's, he's a property owner, he owns a business. Um, but he said that there's about a third there that choose to be there. He goes, there's a third that are transitioning through like he did over a long period of time. There's, right now there's an epidemic of more of the, dr the drugs issues. So knowing the difference and dealing with them in different ways, I think is the key to that, so. Okay, thank you, and our last question. As a rules committee member, how will you work with cities and local government to ensure our priorities get consideration? That's the great thing about when you go into communities to creating these 3M networks, engaging community, you build relationship. Everything I've done in my life and everything you guys have done is, as you serve your cities is about relationship. When you know people, you care about them, you want their best interest. As, a, as the chair of the rules committee, things that matter for the state and for the cities and the counties that we serve that are um, paramount like that, you, know, if you have the authority to say, I want to pull this in for consideration. Let's make sure we get discussion on this from both sides and it's important. So I, I champion your causes because I'm already in relationship with you as your lieutenant governor. Thank you. Will you please join me in thanking Marty McClendon?